Hi, welcome to City of Churches. I'm your host, Anthony Mangano, and today, today our cameras are visiting Our Lady of Lebanon Cathedral right here in Brooklyn Heights. Today we're gonna to find out who these Maronite Catholics are and how they ended up here, here in Brooklyn. So stay tuned and come on back. As you know, many Catholic churches celebrate the Roman or Latin Catholic rite. However, there are some branches of the Catholic Church that celebrate an older tradition, such as the Eastern Rite and the Maronite. Although they predate the Roman tradition, these other rites are in full communion with the Holy See in Rome and remain faithful to the Pope. One such group are the Maronite Catholics. On today's show, we're going to hear from the rector of Our Lady of Lebanon Cathedral, Monsignor James Root. Plus, we have a rare interview with Bishop Gregory Mansour, one of the only two Maronite bishops in the entire USA. The Maronite Church is a, is a particular church that came from the Syriac-speaking Christians, just like the Latin Church came from the Latin-speaking Christians. Syriac is a, is a dialect of Aramaic that Jesus himself spoke. And so our liturgy is a combination of biblical and Jewish liturgical customs and practices weaved into the scriptures to make a beautiful liturgy that is our Maronite liturgy. Maronites rely a lot on chant, ancient Syriac or Aramaic chant, just like Gregorian chant used to be the, the main chant of the Latin church. For someone who would come from the Latin church to see our church, they might notice a few very obvious things, like peace. Peace is not just we turn and shake each other's hand. Peace comes from the altar server. He then takes it to the person at the end of every aisle, and that person receives peace and passes it on to his neighbor. Also, we don't genuflect, we bow. Maronites came from both uh, Lebanon, Syria, Palestine, from parts of the Middle East that, uh, that have given us Christianity and have now sent them forth uh, to seek a better life. And they came here before the turn of the century in the 1850s, 60s, 70s. We have now history of Maronite priests and people coming here. The Maronite community in New York began in the late 1800s in Lower Manhattan. In the 1900s, they established a St. Joseph Church on Washington Street in the heart of what soon became known as Little Syria. They were primarily Arab immigrants from Lebanon and Syria. But the parish eventually included Turks and Armenians as well. The New York Times once described this neighborhood as the heart of the New York Arab world. Did you know that in the 1940s, much of this neighborhood was torn down to make way for the construction of Battery Park and the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel? Prior to this, many in the Maronite community had already migrated to Brooklyn where the first Our Lady of Lebanon Church on Hicks Street had been dedicated in 1906. Notice the 1911 date on this original receipt for two engraved candle operas for that church. In 1944, the Maronite community, under the leadership of Monsignor Mansour Stephen, purchased an old vacant church building on the corner of Henry and Renson Street 
in Brooklyn Heights, which became the new home of Our Lady of Lebanon Church. The building had originally been constructed as the Congregational Church of the Pilgrims. Right now, we're going to hear from the rector of this beautiful cathedral, Monsignor James Root. This church was not originally a, a Maronite Catholic church. This church was built in 1844 by Richard Upjohn. It is the first Re Romanesque revival church in the United States of America and it was part of the um, Congregationalist community. Part of Plymouth Rock used to be in this building, and then when they merged with Plymouth Church, they took Plymouth Rock with them, um, and it's on display at that church. Richard Upjohn also built Trinity Wall Street. He also built Grace Church around the corner from here, Episcopal Church. Um, the original windows that are no longer here are part of Plymouth Church. They were Tiffany stained glass windows. The church was vacant for seven years. And so when Monsignor Mansour Stephen, who was the pastor at the time, when he purchased this building, they said their first mass in here in November of 1944. It was approximately 100 years old. However, it was not solemnly dedicated until the Feast of St. Marin, February the 9th, in 1946. So approximately a year and uh, four months after the, after the first Mass. The Marinite renovation was quite an undertaking. The interior mahogany doors and marble pilasters were salvaged from millionaire Charles Schwab's huge New York City mansion that was demolished in 1948. Look at this, wow. Monsignor Stephen also purchased these two decorative bronze doors from the French luxury liner, the Normandy, which it had burned and capsized in 1942 at Pier 88, Manhattan, while being converted to US troop ships during World War II. The main doors of our cathedral have 10 medallions, six on the very front doors of the church and four on the side doors. Monsignor purchased them and so now they adorn the main entrance of our church and also the side entrance as well. Their medallions had to be rearranged because the church doorways were too small to accommodate the cruise ship's massive doors. The medallions depict famous churches of the world as well as the Normandy itself. In 1953, 10 stained glass windows were created for the church by Swiss artist Jean Croti manufactured in France and made from bits of colored glass embedded in clear enamel. The noted Lebanese artist Saliba Duwahi painted the inspiring mural of Our Lady above the altar. In 1977, All Lady of Lebanon Church was declared a cathedral by Pope Paul VI.
Hi, welcome back to City of Churches. Did you know that the Catholics of Lebanese ancestry have made such important contributions to American culture? The late and beloved comedian Danny Thomas. He was the founder and spokesperson for St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. His daughter, actress Marlo Thomas, she continues to carry on his mission. Other well-known Lebanese Catholics you might recognize, Jamie Farr, Kathy Najami, Herbert Curry, better known as singer Tiny Tim, Tony Shalhoub, author and Academy Award-winning screenwriter William Peter Blotty, and school teacher and astronaut Christy McAuliffe from the Space Shuttle Challenger. And now let's return to Monsignor James Root. Welcome to Our Lady of Lebanon Maronite Catholic Cathedral here in Brooklyn, New York, the Mother Church for the Maronites of the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, originally was the Mother Church for uh, all of the Maronites in the United States. Our diocese uh, encompasses roughly 17 states from Maine all the way down to Florida and approximately 45 parishes and institutions as well. Uh, there are three churches that claim to be the first church to be established. The first is Philadelphia, St. Mary's, also Our Lady of the Cedars in Boston, and of course, New York. So this church was predominantly not of just Lebanese origin, but also Syrian origin as far as the Maronite church. We had two Maronite churches. One was St. Joseph's in Lower Manhattan, and that was predominantly Lebanese. But this community tended to be more from Sham and from Halab. Sham is Damascus, and Halab is Aleppo, Syria. So it was a combination. So we can see that our uh, Maronite roots are not just of Lebanese origin, but also of Syrian origin as well. This present community, we have um, Palestinians, Iraqis, Jordanians, uh, Egyptians. We have many, many people, but predominantly we are of Lebanese origin in this community. If you look around, you'll see in the sanctuary that the sanctuary has marble and onyx. All of that is not original to the Upjohn architecture and style. This church would have been very simple being a Congregationalist church. That was all placed in here by Monsignor Stevens, and it comes from the French and Lebanese pavilions from the 1939 World's Fair. And so Monsignor loved antiquity, and he would find pieces of, of antiques all over and he would incorporate them. The dining room table, for instance, in my, in my rectory is also the captain's table from the Normandy. So Monsignor, he really had an eye for antiquity. In the rectory, you'll also find a table that was owned by Lady Astor. Pope Pius XII ate at that table. Uh, there's a real della Robbia hanging on the wall. The church is just, it really is an art collection in itself as well. As typical in most of the Eastern Catholic churches, unlike the Byzantine and Orthodox church that has an icon screen or an iconostasis that separates uh, the laity from the clergy, we do not have that. But it is very uh, common for us to have the patron or patroness of the church always present. And so in the main gallery above the main sanctuary, we have the icon of Our Lady of Lebanon, uh, the patroness of our community. But also very common in our churches, we would have St. Marin, where we, our name is derived from as Maronites. We see St. Marin with a couple of his monks, and he is preaching in, on the uh, countryside. On this side, are the three Masapki brothers. They were three martyrs in Damascus in the year 1860. They were martyred along with the Franciscan friars. They were asked to uh, renounce their faith and they would be able to keep all of their wealth, all of their possessions. They took refuge in the church, the Franciscan church, and they were martyred in front of the Blessed Sacrament from what we understand. They martyred seven of the friars and the, the three Masapki brothers. 
What's interesting about the Masopkis is that their cause is in Rome. And uh, this community has members of their immediate family. Uh, when I was here at the cathedral in 1985, their family members were very active. Since then, they have all passed, but their lineage is still here in the, in the Brooklyn area. So um, they're very dear and very close to our hearts. And we're hoping that in the next few years that they will, their cause will be complete and that their canonization will take place at the Vatican as well. Our first patriarch, the one who more or less really formed us as a church, is St. John Marin. And we have an anaphora, a Eucharistic prayer that is dedicated to St. John Marin. St. John Marin is depicted here in the medallion above the Nativity. St. John Marin, all of our patriarchs since that time have taken the name of Peter and none of them have had the name of John Marin. Um, I think that's, that's interesting uh, that they would choose not to do that. But to show that Peter went to Antioch first, and our patriarch is the patriarch of Antioch in the East. And so all of our patriarchs, our present patriarch, Bashara Peter Rai, the one before that, Nasrallah Peter. So all of our patriarchs and their lineage have taken the name of Peter as well. Saint Rafka, again a, church, a, a saint around the turn of the century. Rafka means Rachel. She was a, a cloistered sister. Sister Rafka had been in another order prior to the uh, Lebanese order of sisters. And she wanted to be more um, contemplative. So she entered St. Joseph's uh, convent in Jarabta, in northern Lebanon. And she would pray constantly to our Lord, asking him if he really loved her, let her suffer. She wanted to understand how much he had to endure the pain and the suffering. And she thanked him for all of the pain and the sorrow. First thing that happened to her is that she went blind. As a matter of fact, they even took her to an American doctor in Beirut to examine her because she was having severe headaches and her eyesight. And um, they say that her eye actually was dislodged. It came out of her head. And um, the priest, the monk that took her, was outraged at this, and he couldn't believe this was happening, and she gave thanks to Almighty God. And she said, show me some more how much you love me. I want you to show me because I want to show you how much I am willing to suffer for you as well. She became um, physically enabled to, to, to move, to walk, her bones literally, if they tried to move her, her bones would dismember. And so she couldn't. And one day she asked the sisters to take her into the chapel to pray for adoration. And they said to her, Rafka, you're bedridden, you need to stay here. Miraculously, she crawled to the chapel in adoration of the Blessed Sacrament. They say that the only thing she was able to move were her head, and her hands to give praise in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Here at the cathedral, um, I was just newly ordained when they had dedicated uh, the chapel to St. Rafka, our day chapel. And since I have been back, we have put in the Blessed Sacrament in that chapel as well. And eventually, we're going to have perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament because it was such an important aspect of St. Rafka's uh, daily spirituality as well. And so our day chapel is dedicated to her. And we pray to St. Rafka every day here at the cathedral.
Let's continue with Monsignor Root. As I mentioned earlier, we had two Maronite churches. The one in Manhattan, Lower Manhattan, was known as St. Joseph Maronite Catholic Church. The people, because of the Battery Tunnel, Battery Park, and all of uh, the development and the building of the Wall Street area, our people were forced to relocate because of eminent domain. And so many of them did come over to Brooklyn, but as I said, we had two parishes. We had Our Lady here and St. Joseph's over there. It was in 19, uh, roughly 1965 when Archbishop Francis became our first bishop. It was suggested that they sell the property in order that the World Trade Center could be built. When they went to develop the World Trade Center, they demolished the church and thus used it as fill. After 9-11, they were cleaning up. It was one year, it was in October of the following year that they were cleaning the rubble and they unearthed the original cornerstone. It reads St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Maronite Rite Church on it. Uh, they recognized it as being a part of the Maronite community and so they contacted at the time Bishop Stephen Hector and asked him if he would take it and he did. And now it is um, a memorial for all those who perished. And in this community of faith, we had eight individuals who perished in 9-11 in the World Trade Center. The early church, from the very beginnings of Christianity, the church grew and developed in the Middle East, in that area and that we are a church of peace, a church for all peoples. Not trying to convert the multitudes, demand that they become Christian and become Catholic, and, but to show the presence of Jesus Christ, that all peoples, all nations can live as one in unity. It's all right to be different culturally. It's all right to have different foods and different languages and different faith. It's okay. But to honor, to give honor and glory to Almighty God. Here at Our Lady of Lebanon, we have Divine Liturgy. You can find us on our website also for special events, um, www.ololc.org. Um, there's always, the bulletin is always updated, the newsletter. Uh, and events and the history on the cathedral. Um, but the church is always opened every morning for divine liturgy, the Holy Mass. We have Monday through Saturday at 10 o'clock and on Sunday 9 and 11. Most people think that uh, you have to be only Lebanese or Middle Eastern to come here. We have Irish, we have Italian, we have Chinese. We have people coming and coming that are a part, not only to tour the beauty of this cathedral, uh, but also to come and to worship with us. We are in full communion with the Holy See, and so all of our sacraments and whatnot are valid as well. And so we welcome everyone to our cathedral family. And even if it's just to stop in and to say a prayer or to look at the beauty of our building. Daily, we get people from all over the world that are touring, and in the various uh, tour books, they have write-ups about our doors, about the sanctuary, about the windows, about, about various aspects of the history of this church. And so we have Muslims and Jews and Buddhists and Hindus and Christians of all sorts that are coming here and we welcome them to Our Lady of Lebanon. As she welcomes with her arms open wide, we also, as Our Lady welcomes, we welcome to our cathedral as well. 
Well, here's a little interesting history footnote about today's episode. The Archdiocese of New York still operates a small chapel on the South End Avenue in Manhattan called St. Joseph's Chapel, built in 1988. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Remember, if you'd like any information about this episode or you'd like to recommend the church, please contact us at www.netnewyork.net or follow us on Facebook or Twitter. We hope you enjoyed this episode of City of Churches. Please come on back, stay tuned. We'll see you on the next one, all right? I'm Anthony Mangano, and God bless you. Hi. How are you?